Hey guys, I just finished watching A View to a Kill. A guilty pleasure of mine. Um, yes, it's one of the worst in the series. However, I don't hate it quite as much as others. I'm, I'm still going to put it in the top five lowest of the entire series, most likely. Uh, right now it's actually sitting at the third bottom, but I'm looking at some of the other ones um, and I'm like, okay, no, those have to go below this. So, I'll adjust those once I rewatch those movies. But, um, A View to a Kill, it's dumb fun, you can't think about it too much. Um, and, uh, Roger Moore's way too old for the role. And, uh, it's quite... It's, um... Well, I guess it is fast-paced, but there's, like, a lot of different acts. Like, you know how most movies kind of have, like, three acts? This one has, like, five or six. Um, so buckle yourself in for that. But, um... Okay, so, A View to a Kill. What's happening? Well, I'm not gonna lie, I actually don't 100% fully comprehend what's happening, but I believe at the start of the film, Bond picks up a microchip off of his fallen comrade's body, and then the microchip leads them to Max Zorin. Um, this is now the... Of the two movies I've seen Christopher Walken in, he was both named Max in, so... Interesting. Um, but uh, Max is this, they make it a point to really tell you that he's like this Captain America super soldier program gone wrong. And he's supposed to have this really high IQ, even though he's kind of an idiot in the film. Um, and he's also supposed to be, you know, even though every single Bond villain is psychopathic and psychotic to some degree. Um, well, I guess Goldfinger isn't psychopathic, he's just, you know, delusional, a little bit narcissistic. But um, he's supposed to be the most psychotic villain yet. However, his little quirks are not able to distinguish himself enough from the other villains in the series, in my opinion. And even though I do like Christopher Walken, I would still declare this one of the weaker villains of the series, if I'm being honest with myself. Um, but, so this is where things get weird and dumb. Um, so Max wants to uh, monopolize the microchip industry, so uh, Bond is able to follow leads through his racing horses, which are able to win races because they have microchips in their, like, their brains that are remotely activated. That increase the, the horses, it, like, it, um, bypasses their, I guess, body's normal functions, like, when it, when it gets tired or something like that. Um, and then, eventually we learn that he wants, Max wants to completely destroy Silicon Valley, which is the world's number one uh, production center for microchips, and then I guess he'll have a monopoly on it and be even more rich than he already is. So, yes, this is one of the worst plots, in my opinion, of uh, Bond, for sure. Uh, it's just, you know, it's about dumb microchips that are barely explained properly, so I'm not going to pretend like it's, I, you know, it's a really great story or anything. Um, as far as villain plans go, this is one of the more dumb ones, and also he has this terrible getaway plan with the most ridiculous chase, if we can call it that, in Bond history through the blimp. I think the blimp, yeah, the blimp is definitely the worst mode of transportation you could possibly pick for a getaway vehicle. Okay, so what does uh, A View to a Kill get right? As I said, I do like the cast, actually, um, for the most part. I do think Roger Moore is too old for the role, but you know what? At least he's still kind of trying. The first time I watched this, I felt like he was unenthusiastic. I'm going to take that back. I actually think Roger Moore's like kind of having, you know, shits and giggles with this one, I felt. You know, he's not, he's not entirely bored. He's just kind of screwing around. So, Roger Moore's too old, but I do like Christopher Walken. And uh, Grace Jones, even though she looks kind of like an alien and has way too much makeup, um, I still think she's a standout in this film. And I think Mayday is one of the more memorable uh, henchmen or henchwomen, whatever you want to say, uh, for, although, okay, I'm not going to make that joke, uh, of this series, he is one of the more memorable ones. Um, but the, just the material around it isn't able to elevate it too far, so it still has to go quite low in our rankings. But yeah, in his defense, I, uh, I like how you know, cheesily sophisticated it is, I guess. Like, they're kind of making fun of all this rich, posh culture. And um, I thought that this movie has some pretty good comedy compared to other Bond films. I mean, every single Bond film has some level of comedy, but this one really drives it home with its goofiness and antics and all that. And I really like the uh, whole 
uh, Bond and his valet servant uh, co-worker was really funny, so. Yeah, um, <laughs> I was, no, I'm, this is not a good thing, but like, there are some dumb, unique chases in here, like, you know, we've never seen a horse chase before, where like the, the horse, <laughs> the actual horse track is like rigged to go, <laughs> it's just so dumb. Yeah, okay, so the movie's dumb fun, and uh, Grace Jones, even though she scares me, is a standout. Um, okay, so, but the reason this movie can't go higher is because Roger Moore's too old for the role, and that's really demonstrated here, um, just because it feels like, I don't, this is probably exaggeration, but like, it feels like 50% of his scenes are done in front of a green screen. Like, even when he has to just like jump a small distance, it's like switching to a stunt actor, so. He's just too old for this role. Uh, it makes the Bond girl interactions even more weird and questionable. Where in something like um, the previous two films, they played around his age appropriately. Um, in this one, they don't really do that. They kind of just give him some young love interests again. And uh, just call it a day. Kind of weird. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's not a movie I need to like rip apart. It's obviously really dumb. It's uh, one of the more unbelievable uh, Bond adventures, in my opinion. Lots of easily escapable situations. People are incapable of firing their guns properly. Um, lots of, uh, I mean, at the end there, uh, Max is straight up just like using a fire axe instead of, I don't know, just being equipped with a firearm. But um, yeah, everyone here is incompetent. It's a dumb story, but it is kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. It is one of the more fun ones to rewatch. And let's not pretend, um, that this movie did not give us one of the greatest pop songs of all time, Duran Duran's A View to a Kill. Such a good song. I was gonna say such a good Bond song, but it's not even really true. Yes, this song was developed for Bond, but it's kind of transcended that at this point, right? It's uh, not necessarily known as a Bond song, it's just a great song on its own. So, yeah, but um, I would say the best part of the film is the Duran Duran opening song. And also the instrumental, uh, or the orchestral recreations of the Duran Duran song are really cool throughout this. Um, and uh, the worst part of the film is the blimp. So, A View to a Kill gets a harsh but necessary 4 out of 10. I would still rather watch a bad Bond film as opposed to any other generic action film. And that is kind of why I just don't really hate this one or anything. Like, a lot of people get really upset when they talk about this one. Like, it's like robbed them of their childhood or something. Not the case for me. I think it's stupid fun. Christopher Walken is having a good time. Grace Jones is having a good time. I don't mind it, so yeah.